So last year you said that, ironically, you hated running and you started to like running. Now. Yeah, it's the one thing that's like remained a part of my training like consistently over the past year just because, especially these first few months, I know now that it's hot in Vancouver, <laughs> even though it's usually cold. Right now it's hot and I'm in my leather suit and I'm on the treadmill. So I was like in, in LA in 97 degree weather running outside in a hoodie to like be ready for season two. I feel much more prepared overall for season two, for sure. Uh, you're a lovable version of Barry Allen. It's kind of an amalgamation of Wally and Barry. Yeah. Um, do you have any advice you could give Ezra Miller about playing the Flash? No, I mean he's a great actor. So he's, I know, like for me too. I didn't go in like thinking, oh, I'm gonna combine Wally and Barry. I think that kind of like organically happened just because of like who I am, what I bring to it, and they cast me for those reasons, I guess. And you know, Ezra was cast for the film for whatever reasons they saw in him, and I think he's a terrific actor. So I'm sure he'll just kind of do his thing, and it'll be great. Well, given the events of the finale, what is Barry's mindset when we meet, see him in season two? Um, Barry is having some trouble kind of dealing with... He's, he's, he, there's, he's got some acclaim right now and some uh, a lot of love from the city for being the hero that he is, and he doesn't really feel like the hero because... We'll kind of see pieces as to what happened with the singularity when we come back and how it affected all of the characters. And I think what's way, one of the things that's really weighing heavily on Barry is he knows that Eddie stopped Wells and that he was the hero of that day. And um, but everyone's kind of giving the credit to the Flash, and I don't, that's not like fun or easy. I don't think for Barry. Uh, so I think that's one of the harder things he's dealing with right now, and just. Now he feels like he can't really work with anybody because of the way everything goes down. He feels like he's jeopardizing everybody and he just, just kind of wants to be alone for a little bit when we're finding him. There were so many great emotional moments in season one. What was the one that hit you? The scene with Nora, for sure. It was, I, I mean, I think that was really well deserved just from the way that Greg and Andrew and the writers like developed the whole season. I thought that moment was like completely necessary and I thought it was perfectly crafted and the first time I read that scene I uh, was a mess and um, <laughs> like I can't think about it actually with getting like a little affected and like after we shot that scene um, I hadn't experienced anything like as an actor quite like that since like college like in being in like acting class and just like really like kind of being there and I mean it really like it was like very uh, it just really rocked me. I mean, I remember when I went home that night after shooting that scene, it, it took like four or five hours because of logistical things. And I was still just like sobbing in the shower after that day. I was like, I felt very emotional after shooting that <laughs> scene for like days. I felt like I had said goodbye to like someone I truly loved or someone had died. That, it was really weird. So that, that scene definitely affected me more than anything else. We see you in the speed force behind the glass on the other side. Uh, can you talk about who was sitting across from you and what's going on there? Um, that that's a famous story. Yeah, that wasn't that was no bullshit. That was I don't know when or if that'll happen, but they they usually don't Easter egg things without having them come to fruition. So. So was it just that scene then? That, yeah, was, that, that? was it. Okay. That was it. And I, to be honest, like I had, I wouldn't have even known what we were shooting if I didn't have some point of reference from reading the comics. Like no one even explained that to me, like okay. what we were doing. And I, that that could take longer than most other things. I think that we got a glimpse of to actually happen. That's a season one story. Right? Yeah. yeah, that's <laughs> like a that that will maybe probably get its own season. Yeah. Is there any more karaoke in Barry's future? I hope so. I, yes. The one thing, the one thing I wanted for season two was just to have that episode twelve fun. Um, just because when we come back, it is it's pretty heavy still, and it's uh, obviously just because the way the first season was ending, we're having to deal with all of that, and um, so it's out of the gate. It's it's pretty like season one emotional heavy, um, but uh, hopefully we can have more fun. And, karaoke at times. So I, I, we even mentioned that, like, why not frequent that bar and have, like, bring Cisco and, like, have that be a thing that we do on a regular basis, but I don't know. I'm definitely pushing fun for season two. 
when a, you, oh, I'm sorry. Well, when you signed up to do a superhero show, did you already know it was also a time travel show? Uh, yeah. I mean, I knew that down the line, time travel would start to be incorporated. I didn't think it would happen in season one, um, but it's cool that it did. I think it was one of the. I used to. I, I feel like at Comic Con last year, that's what I mostly talked about. Was that I hoped we could do time travel in the near future. And that's what I was most excited about. And I think we incorporated it in a pretty fun way. So. I there's a Flash costume downstairs with a white logo. Yeah. Is that yours for season two? Is that official? That's mine. Yeah, I I'm not wearing it yet. I wore the red emblem for what we've shot thus far, but yeah, I'll be in that that emblem pretty soon.